Hey, great friends, what's happening? It's Kaplan and crew, and we're just getting ready to get started. So um, I want to thank a bunch of our sponsors first. Last night, Alex, uh, had a nearly embarrassing situation. So uh, Jason Lawhead comes over to the house last night because he asked me to pick him up some stuff at Tory Holistics, right? So I picked him up these three products that he wanted, and uh, he came over last night to get them. And Lawhead's the kind of guy that when he comes over, he's like, hey, what are you doing? You want to watch a ball game? What do you want to do, you know? And I'm like, yeah, I got to go, man. I, I got I got to go meet my girlfriend for dinner, you know? So um, anyway, I uh, I give him the products and then I say, hey, you know, the show's getting ready to come on TV right now. And so we're sitting here watching the beginning of the show on Channel 4 San Diego. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, all right, dude, we got to go. And I turn off the TV because I know that in a few minutes it's coming where I'm ripping brown, I'm, I'm ripping uh, Lawhead for being like oh, nice. unbearable when you watch a football game with him, you know? <laughs> and so, so dude, I literally had to go, all right, we got to go. I, I didn't think it was green. that bad. No, no, it wasn't that bad. It was not that bad, but I, but, but it's probably it, awkward situation, right? If he's driving down the road and he hears it, it's fine. If I'm sitting there and I'm telling it to him, like while he and I are together, it's going to be uncomfortable. So, <laughs> um, I gave Jay law his stuff and I'll tell you guys right now through the holidays, the promo code is amazing. Use it, save 20% at Tory Holistics and California Holistics. And I suspect Charlie will stop by the show before we, we take our break here before the end of the year. So peanut butter drive um, too. Oh yeah. And the peanut butter drive is awesome. You know, you just bring a jar of peanut butter. I don't remember if it's 16 ounces or whatever the ounces are. You bring a, a jar of peanut butter. They give you a one penny pre-roll. So you come help them. Alex, I think um, you mentioned yesterday the name of the organization that they're supporting. I don't recall it off the top of my yeah. head. It's San pretty, Diego pretty, Kids, I believe. Um, but either way, it's it's kids that don't have food, literally do not have food during the holidays. So by bringing a plastic jar of peanut butter, um, it we literally take it from Tory Holistics and hand it off to these families and these kids that need it. So Tory Holistics and California. Got your back, San Diego. Got your back, San Diego. Yeah, this is the picture I took from inside the dispensary on Sunday night. Got your back, San Diego. Thank you for saying that. Uh, the promo code is amazing. If you just you know, use the QR code right there on the screen, it'll take you to their website. You'll learn all about it. Tori Holistics and California Holistics. Yes, Open sir. every day. Christmas Day, yeah. Christmas Eve. Oh, dude. New Year's they don't Eve, care. New Year's Day. They, yeah, they know. Open. They know. If you need <laughs> weed and you go there and you're like, what, you're closed? Let me in. Yeah. Yeah. It's awesome. All right. Hey, one other sponsor I'd like to, uh, and, and partner I'd like to mention here before we hit the, uh, the beginning of the show is our, th these are our people at prize picks. I have received yesterday from prize picks that I am entitled to a free play. And it's like six different, um, different players that I could, that I could build. So it was like, it cost me nothing. They gave it to me for free. And then I had to, uh, I had to see if I could, you know, if I could make it happen, but, um, here's how it works. Uh, my entries are, I've got all football this week. So I've got Matthew Stafford and I'm going under on Justin Fields. I'm going less Russell Wilson, James Conner, Lamar Jackson, CD lamb. I've got all these guys in a free flex play six picks to win $125 for no money. Zero. So get involved with prize picks, prize picks.com slash great friends, prize picks.com slash great friends. Yes, sir. Going to jump in again. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, missile taco day. Okay. So bunch of discounts throughout. Uh, the app, including mm -hmm. John Morant's first game back. Okay, twenty and a half. If you want to, mm -hmm. if you want to mess around with a little hockey, Scott. I know you've been digging mm -hmm. in. Mm -hmm. Connor McDavid gets a uh, two and a half shots on goal. Okay, so there is a bunch of stuff happening on Price Picks. Right and now. is that is that like when you just open up the app? Because I've yeah. already gotten the emails. You know, yeah. If you open the app and hit dig in, it'll tell you the the, the discounts. Okay. All right. Very good. Um, all right. Hey, prizepicks.com slash great friends. Your, your first deposit, they'll match it hundred percent. You put in a hundred bucks, they'll put in a hundred bucks. Prizepicks.com slash great friends. Let's start the show. Yo, what's going on everybody? It's Kaplan and crew. It's Tuesday afternoon. We're in the Seven Mile Casino studio, sevenmilecasino.com. And as you can tell, for those of you that are watching, we got up our holiday decorations. And I don't know about you guys, I keep saying it, I'm already in the holiday mood. So we're just getting rolling. We're just getting onto the radio airwaves of 1090, onto TV tonight, Channel 4 San Diego and the Cox Your View Network, YouTubing all over the world. Make sure you get involved in our live YouTube chat. And by the way, we're not that far away from 8,000 subscribers on YouTube. So if you're not a subscriber, make sure you subscribe 
and to all of our audio podcast listeners, wherever you are, whenever you're listening, we're glad you guys are here. Grande, Brown Man, good afternoon, gentlemen. It's only Tuesday, but um, I got to say, as we're heading down the stretch here of the NFL season, and we're through 15 weeks, and after I watched this game last night, another incredible storyline of a backup quarterback coming through. And this is a guy who's got actually some experience in Drew Locke with Seattle. But to beat a team like Philadelphia and to see Philly now in a three-game losing streak, which we saw San Francisco have earlier in the year, it just seems like as we get to the end of these NFL weeks, everything is always changing. And today's Tuesday, and I'm already looking forward to Thursday for the Rams and the Saints because that's two seven and seven teams in a playoff game, essentially. Gentlemen, good afternoon. What's on your mind, Grande? What's on my mind? Um, yeah. Senioritis. <laughs> uh, yeah, I got been so behind the scenes, you guys don't see what I gotta do. So my preparation for next week has been in full effect because I have to produce shows still. And I'm just like at that point where I'm like, man, is it Friday yet? You know, like because I've just been doing it for about a week now. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that's where my mind is currently at. But as far as sports go, uh, you know, I don't know who's good in the NFL because everybody can talk about the 49ers all they want, mm-hmm. but they're the Dodgers of football. They'll find a way to screw it up in the playoffs. They always do. And I'm until they prove me otherwise, I'm just going to keep saying that, you know, like, yeah, the Niners are always good. What's new? They can run the hell out of the ball. They have good playmakers. They have a great defense. They're well coached. When have they not been? When have they not been? And they find a way to screw it up, whether in the Super Bowl or in the NFC Championship or in the playoffs or their quarterback goes down with a catastrophic arm injury. And yeah, so are the Eagles frauds? Maybe. Are the Cowboys frauds? Definitely. So honestly, throw your th- throw the names in a hat and let's see who comes out of the NFC. Because I All bet right. you it won't be, I bet you it won't be who we think it is. All right, here here goes. You ready? If I rank the teams in order of what, of what I think are the best teams in the NFC, if I rank them mm-hmm. this way, San Francisco, mm-hmm. Philly, clearly struggling right now, mm-hmm. um, Dallas, Detroit, after I get past that, then I've got the Rams, the Saints, the Seahawks, the Buccaneers. Those are all like seven and seven teams. I'll ask yeah. you guys. Of the Rams, Saints, Seahawks, Buccaneers, those type of teams. Can any of those types of teams beat Philly, San Francisco, Dallas, and Detroit? Yes. Okay, I agree. I agree. Because honestly, you could be the Rams. You could get into the playoffs with a 9-8 and record, let's just say. And even though you're 9-8 and and kind of squeaking in in the wild card, you might find yourself playing a San Francisco, Philadelphia, Detroit, or Dallas. And guess what? I would think the Rams, the Saints, the Buccaneers, I give them a shot. What do you think, Brown? Rams get cooked. Bucks get cooked. The Seahawks get cooked. By who? These teams by the 49ers. These by teams all, no, get no, cooked. But, but what about all four teams besides the 49ers? I think everyone else seems to be the Cowboys. I just do because I think the Cowboys are really like one if you get if you get that Prescott behind it's a totally different player. End of story. And so I think all those teams could beat the Cowboys. I think the Eagles will figure out what the situation is with them because they can still physically punish you. I think the Lions have the ability to physically punish you. And I think the 49ers have the ability to physically punish you. The Cowboys win on talent. Like, we are better than you. And now all of a sudden when you're not better than them, it doesn't look the same. It doesn't move the same. The, the the feel of the game when you're watching them, the sideline doesn't look the same. And so I think all those teams can beat the Cowboys. I don't think any of those other teams can beat the upper echelon division leading teams. Do you? So I don't remember what week it was, but I know I said it on the show. And I got ridiculed by my buddies. Um, I was at a brewery and they were and the Bengals were bad at the time. And 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 the, the Lions were OK. But I remember I said on this show, like week three or four, I was like Lions Chiefs Super Bowl. Like that wouldn't that that wouldn't surprise me. Like right. that really wouldn't surprise me at all. Right. Like, right. like if the and you know what wouldn't surprise me either if the Lions lose in the first round. Right. Correct. Yep. Right. One of those years. 
Right. If the Lions, I, for example, if the Lions, I'm just using this as an example. If the Lions played the Vikings in the playoffs, mm -hmm. and while the Vikings are, you know, like a mess at quarterback, we all know we all know the story. They're one of the teams that has had to go through four of them, right? Yeah. Is it three Probably or four? If that happens, that would be yeah. that would mean the Vikings and the Lions play each other three times in four weeks. Wow. Because the, I'm the, if I'm the Lions, I don't want to do that. <laughs> because I don't want to do that. The Vikings and the Lions play this week. They don't mm -hmm. play the next week, and they wrap up the play season the against each, each other. other. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And just that right now, if that were to happen, if Detroit played Minnesota, are you yeah. like automatic? Like, oh, Detroit's going to kill them. Like Minnesota no. stands no chance. Or how about this? I mean, to your point, Browner, if I told you that the Cowboys were playing the Rams in the first round of the playoffs, I'm just making up an example here, probably a bad example. Let's say the Lions are playing the Rams. Let's say the Lions are playing the Rams. You you give the Rams a chance, don't you? See, I don't like the I don't like the Rams against the Lions because the Rams are the, the Lions are just too physical for the Rams. They're too I, now the Cowboys is a different story because the Cowboys can I mean the Rams can break a couple plays against the Cowboys, and then the Cowboys won't know what to do. You hit them in the mouth with offense. Now Dak's got to play catch up. Dak's got to play from behind. Dak's got to be the hero, and I think that's where they're going to get in trouble. If you come out and you score 14 and you get the Lions 14 to nothing, that's happened to them a couple times this year. The Bears had them beat like that. They found a way to win because they keep hitting you. And that that's hard. That's hard. And I don't think I don't think the, the Rams can overcome that. But if they got out there against the Cowboys and Cowboys Stadium where they've choked before, and you look up there and it's 17 to 3, Rams over the Cowboys in a second quarter. Oh man, that panic game mean set in. You know what I don't like about the Eagles too, and I see this. I see this every time I watch them play. I don't think they like each other as teammates. It doesn't. Feel I don't right, think AJ Brown and Jalen Hurts at all like each other. They're just good. I it really feels genuinely don't feel like there's this cohesion with the Eagles. Mm -hmm. I think their coach thinks he blends well with the team, but it's only because they're winning. And now that they're not winning, the comments are already coming out. The diva ness of wide receivers comes out. Whereas I look at the Niners and they all love each other. Like they're all that. I give them that. Like their chemistry seems to be off the charts. For like real. Ridiculously, for really, real. really, really good. Um, yeah. And they're all on the same page. I feel like Purdy knows his place on the team and right. everybody and the guys that are supposed to be leaders are leaders. You know, the Trent Williams, the Debo Samuels, like those guys, the Fred Warners, they lead. Whereas in, in Philly, I guess Jalen Hurts is the leader, but. After him throwing his whole team under the bus last night, how long does that go for? I don't know, man. Like, I just, I, so well, that's why the Cowboys, listen, I think the Cowboys are the biggest frauds well, in the NBA. But, but, oh, but, just, Tampa Bay, but, but if Tampa Bay played Philadelphia, can I just ask you guys, if Tampa Bay played yeah. Philadelphia in a, in a first round playoff game, smoked, yeah, who smoked? The Bucks, they're smoked. I, I guess they're what smoked. my, my, I guess my point though is, is that, is that this is how this whole conversation began. San Francisco, Alex, you said they're the Dodgers of the NFC. That's a solid comparison. They seem to make it to the NFC Championship game. I don't know, they make four of the last five years, something like that, and they they really have only been to one Super Bowl. Um, I mean, one Super Bowl here in the recent future, right? With uh, Shanahan, yeah. Right. And then um, Dallas, you don't feel overly confident about. Detroit, you're not quite you're not positive about. Philadelphia looks like it's trending downward. My point is, is that Tampa Bay, Minnesota, the Rams, Seattle, I, I don't know that there's yeah. this monster separation. Yeah. I wouldn't some anticipate of those the did. Vikings. I personally not. And I know I'm always negative with them. I just personally wouldn't anticipate the Vikings being in the playoffs because of their schedule remaining. I just think those are three tricky in division games and they're on quarterback number four. And if he loses again, they might be out quarterback number two again or three again, <laughs> whatever, however you rank them. But I'd like the Seahawks are just well coached. Like if you just Correct. look at them, they're just well coached the same way the Rams are. The Rams are just well coached. Are they the most talented? The Seahawks have a lot more talent, I feel like, but they're just always there. They don't seem to ever really get blown out. They just seem to be in, like really irritating to play against. Like last night was a perfect example. It was like they just wouldn't go away, and they end up stealing that game at the end with an incredible drive at the end. The 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 Seahawks know where to be. Their players know what they're doing. There's no questions. When there is a bone blown play, you don't see guys pointing angrily at each other. It's guys like trying to work out what happened in the situation. I, I I've I've said this and I'm gonna keep saying this. Say it. Jalen Hurts is not better than Justin Fields. His team is. 
His team is. And when they were winning these games barely, and it was looking ugly, but they were winning because he was getting these one-yard touchdowns, and everybody go, oh, look at the touchdowns. Yeah, but look at everything else. Like, they lost. Two, head, two of their staff members are head coaches now on successful teams. One, the Colts, nobody saw that coming. Mm -hmm. And so when you lose those level of coaches off your roster, you're going to have fall off. Their, their defense, there's no way they should have gave up those plays at the end of that. Now, DK, that one catch where he's like juggling it around his legs, like I guess we got a trick shot. Like that's awesome. But outside of that, you got to play better defense. You got to play better defense. Their strength's supposed to be in their front four. Where's the pressure? Well, it's also more. very rare that you see a, was it 10 win team? The Eagles, nine win, whatever. Yeah, it's very wins. rare that you see a week 15 defensive coordinator change. Yeah, that was right. really weird. Right. Really yeah. strange. And, yeah. and listen, and to lose a game, and I grant you, Philadelphia to Seattle, Monday night football, cold, wet. Not that Philly shouldn't be accustomed to these kinds of conditions. Say, it's both those you know, things in Philly right. at times. But what I'm getting at is, is that, um, you know, if you're a real contender, and these guys were in the Super Bowl a year ago, you go on the road against the decent Seattle team and you win that game, um, particularly when Seattle's using their backup quarterback. So, and the play that was made at the end of the game, where uh, Locke, what's the name of the receiver from Seattle that caught that in, that Jackson touchdown pass? Jigba. Jackson Smith Najigba. Yeah, you have the the highlight. What a catch, man! What a throw! What a catch! I mean, looking over his shoulder and grabbing it with his fingertips. I mean, this is just a beautiful, beautiful catch. What a throw! And Seattle, what a win last night. And then you said um, you said Jalen Hurts threw his team under the bus. I, I didn't hear his post game. What, what did he no, say? I got you. Here you okay. go. We didn't execute. Um, I don't think we were, we're all were uh, committed enough. You know, just, you know, just, just got to turn it around. You know, um, you know, it's a challenge that we have to embrace. Just continue to see it through. What do you mean by that, about being committed or not? Commitment. I don't know nothing that if I had a dictionary on me now. Um, excuse me. I don't know um, how else to say. Well, I don't know what he's saying. What he do just you said mean? the team's not committed. Committed to what? Correct. To it. Hmm. That doesn't make any sense at all whatsoever like if you're gonna what throw your team under the bus can you can you like throw them under the bus? right can you like be more <laughs> definitive please with what you mean pick, yeah. pick a person you're talking about pick a side of the ball so you could throw them under the bus so mm -hmm. we know who to aim our next question at because right. just saying are the coaches not committed when all the say, way yeah when you say we're not committed you mean like your teammates are trainers? not committed to winning mm -hmm. right are they going out drinking the night before games are they not hitting the weight room are they not practicing do they not study film what do you mean they're not committed are you? Which is, it's a weird thing to say because think about this. With a minute and what, 20 seconds left, I think it was when that interception happened, somewhere somewhere around that, mm -hmm. they held them to 13 points. <laughs> so it wasn't like it was some like shootout or they got blown out. They held them to 13 points with a minute and 20 seconds left. Yeah. By the and way, the NFL defenses do what they do. They start giving people cushions and guys start making chunk plays. Dude. How dope was that interception, by the way? Like, oh my god, I've I've never seen. I think his name's Love. It's not Jordan, but he, he was actually helped by his falling down teammate. Yes, right. That kicked his leg back in. Yeah, right. Because that, that toe, was incredible. That every and we watched the highlight I and mean, the the replay over and over and over yeah. again to see did he get two feet in and his left leg had kicked his teammate's leg and it just barely his toe just barely scraped the turf while his right leg was in, you know, it was a crazy interception and a crazy, crazy moment in the game last night. Mm -hmm. Um, and then, Hey, listen, drew luck. Is that, I, I drew lock lock lock. I, I forgot about this guy because again, Everybody did. well, but you, you know, know, you know, Smith. Well, you know, he's, he's another one of these guys. Didn't he play for Denver for like, he started. Yeah, it was part of the started. Russell Wilson trade. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, he, he played for package. So, so he has some experience, but I, I saw last night after the game, they said that um, it was his first fourth quarter comeback in like 1,200 days. So you do the math on that, right? I mean, it's been years 
since this guy has been in a position like this. And here you are against the defending NFC champions mm -hmm. in a pressure packed situation to keep your team alive for the postseason. And Drew Locke puts on that kind of performance. With, well, you know, okay, okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's, let's, let's not do that now. Do what? Two of those catches yeah. were amazing by DK. Okay. Those were amazing. Now, that last that last throw also, by your own admitting, that's a great catch. Great catch. The, the catch where DK basically has it under his hip, yep. rolls it around his leg, yep. and that's a reception. That should have been an interception. And the ball yeah. down the sideline that DK catches it between two people, that's DK. Yeah, but I'm not but I'm not knocking the quarterback because his receivers made plays for him because that's what I did the other day with Justin Fields. I was knocking Justin Fields and you said, "Well, his receivers didn't make plays for him." And you you pointed it out. We showed the video. So, I'm not taking anything Look, when you don't play for 4 years and you come into a situation like this and you succeed against a team like Philadelphia, I'm giving Drew Locke some credit. Well, and he, he has missed. played. He has played this year for the Seahawks. Geno missed a couple games, so he yeah, has but, played. But but to not be in a position to have a fourth quarter comeback for 1,200 days. Uh, yes, he's come in and he's played when there's been injury, but he hasn't played consistently in years, has he? No. So um, what after the game, he was a very endearing character, I thought. You know, uh, the, the post-game interview. I'm, like right on the field, Alex, you have any of that? It takes a special group to rally around a guy that, you know, has come into his second game of the year, right? Used to the same thing all year long, same cadence, same spin of the ball, everything. For a team like that, not just the offense, the defense to rally around me tonight, man, that was that was amazing. I see some, I hear some emotion in your voice. Yeah. It's been a long time. It's been a long time. Um, I'm just blessed. I'm just blessed. Blessed with a great group of guys, a great city, great coaching staff. It's just, it's, it's awesome. I found him to be very endearing. Mm -hmm. That's all. Sure because he was there, supposed to yeah. be the guy, man, and then he wasn't. And when was he supposed to be the guy? In Denver. Second round pick in Denver. Yeah, but, yeah. I mean, yeah, he, he he got traded, right? I mean, he didn't, he wasn't some star. He wasn't successful in Denver. There was a time where you were like, well, maybe he's going to be good. And he wasn't. He was, he was one of these guys who they drafted, gave him the keys, and he struggled. And so, yeah. similar to Gino, you struggle, then you go to a place you have a resurgence, and you have like these emotions because, right. man, look, I I did it, I can do yeah. it, and look at what and that's my team. Awesome about look it. Look how my teammates rallied for me. Correct. I love it, man. I found it to be. Awesome. I, I, I liked it. Uh, hey, listen, let me uh, do this before we keep rolling here today. Uh, prize picks today. Prize picks got some some things going on for you today. And Alex, I'm opening up the app and I'm trying to figure out. Um, like how to get into like the promotions that they've got going on. Cause right now I'm about to do this. I'm going to play some hockey tonight. You guys know who oh, Connor boy. McDavid is from, from oh, the Edmonton boy. Oilers. You know, who that is Alex, you're wearing yeah. your San Diego state hockey Jersey today. I thought you might know some hockey. That is a good looking hockey sweater, by the way. Yeah. Where'd you get that? San Diego state hockey. Where is that from? Uh, I don't know. Fanatics or something. Oh, really? That is cool looking. And how about this? John Morant coming back tonight. Um, his, his more or less number is 20 and a half points. Brown, are you like that or not? It's a discount from no, 26 and a half. <laughs> mm -hmm. I don't like that at all. You don't? So you think, you think John Morant less? I have no idea what John Morant has been doing. I don't trust John Morant. I wouldn't bet him right out the gate. I got to see him play. Okay. So I gotta you, see him play. but the discount, they're trying to inspire me to play. Right. It need to be 10 points. It need to be 10 mm -hmm. points for me to get, okay. to right, get on the damn floor with that. I'm clearing this one out. I'm not going to do that play then. 20 Ooh. is a lot for a guy's first I'm... game back after 25-game suspension. Ugh. There is a MLB Futures on here now, too. Oh, really? I love that. MLB season at the top. You yep, can bet it. more or less on home run futures. And right there at the top, yeah. Shohei, Shohei Otani and Juan Soto. Right. Uh, low tiny future bets, by the way, all the way to go here because I, yeah. I got a bet sitting in a cooker for Wimby and Chet rookie points per game average. That bet's already won. I'm just waiting to cash that thing in. All right, so Alex, I, I'm I opened the app and there's supposed to be like a big special today, but I think I already closed it out, so I, I got to figure out how to get back into that. You know, what I'm saying what, what is the special today? Do you know? You just talked about it, Connor McDavid and uh, John Morant. Oh, it's just those two guys, yeah, for right now. 
Okay, well, I'm taking them then. I'm, I, listen, if they're going to inspire me to do this, I'm going to take them. I'm going to go into the end. I'm going to, you know what? I'm going to say John Morant's going to go crazy tonight. I think he's going to score more. So there you go. I'm taking a What you're talking about is the, uh, the pickings, the sixth day of pickings. Miss. Right. Pickings. Right. Miss, I think. Let me hit this break. We're coming right back. Stick around. This is Kaplan and crew. Hey, great friends. What's going on? It's Kaplan and crew with Grande and the Brown Man. We're in the Seven Mile Casino Studios, sevenmilecasino.com. At the end of the first segment, I was trying to figure out my prize picks. And uh, so it, it's Taco Tuesday on prize picks. So I'm trying to get out there and play. Hey, Browner, how about this? Prize picks gave me an opportunity to play six picks uh, for free. For free. What? To win $125. A free flex play. A free flex play. Flex how come I didn't get that? A free hey. flex play. Um, listen to this, and here's what I put together. Hi, Daffy. Yeah, a free flex play. <laughs> I've got Matthew Stafford for more than 248 and a half yards passing. I've got Justin Fields. I don't know how I got more. I I thought I was taking you less under that. Oh no, I they know. play they play Arizona. They play yeah. Arizona. So Over. I said more more than 197 and a half because I figure more. his receivers will catch balls for him this week. Russell Wilson. I've got less than 210 and a half passing. Who they playing? Con uh, they're playing New England. I'm just not mm. I'm not down with Russell Wilson after the beatdown that he took, that verbal lashing that he took by Sean yeah, Payton on the sideline this weekend. Dude. Sometimes you gotta take it when the coach the coach come at you like that, you gotta take it sometime. Yeah. I mean, like so other quarterbacks might get right back into a coach's face. Russell Wilson just stood there and took it. Sometimes you, you gotta know? take it, man. I've he been got, there before. He got just beat down by his coach. I mean, just mm. for everybody to see. Um, I've got James Conner to go for more than 60 and a half rushing yards. I've got Lamar Jackson for less than 50 and a half rushing yards against San Francisco. And I've got CD lamb to have a passing rushing or receiving touchdown. Um, Cause the number is half and uh, Dallas is playing Miami. So hmm. anyway, so prizepickscom slash great friends. They'll match your first deposit hundred percent up to a hundred dollars. Get involved with prize picks. Cause man, we're having a great time with it. And, I love your idea of the futures with baseball, with Otani and Soto, and how many home runs those guys are going to hit. I love that. Mm -hmm. I'm jumping on something, that. Or, something to root for or against all season. I like, yeah. I like keeping me entertained all year. I know, I like it too. All right, let me uh, let me move back here to some stuff I want to get to. Um, so we were talking last Friday about how Christmas had come early and the Raiders had annihilated, ham slammed, motorboated. The Chargers just destroyed them, just mm -hmm. just just oh, crushed them, destroyed them, and, and then fired the coach, fired the general manager. Interesting little sub story to this. On Saturday morning, so imagine the Raiders beat the Chargers Thursday night. Saturday morning, I got a a text message from JT the Brick in Vegas, mm -hmm. feeling you right, Browner. I think that's him. <laughs> no, that ain't him, Browner. That ain't him. Wrong brick, Browner. Yeah. So my boy JT the Brick, the voice of the Raider Nation, sends me a text on Saturday morning of a video. And he's walking around this new casino in Vegas. That La he's Fontaine out. Blue? Right, right. The or Fountain La Fountain? Blue. Right, the, Fount the Fountain Blue, right? So a, a new casino, new hotel, yes. supposed to be spectacular, the whole thing. Do you know right. where it is? 16 I, I was told years right under construction, behind the really? stratosphere, I think. Oh, no, yeah. I was told right by the sphere. Years. I was told right by the sphere, yeah, not by the back, back over there, that way, that uh -huh. way, back there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So anyway, so JT's walking around. He's like, oh, my God, look at this place. And he's kind of just shooting a video just to kind of mm -hmm. show people, like, look at this brand new place that I'm checking out. Mm -hmm. He looks over here with his phone and he sees a guy at a like a coffee stand, you know, like in mm -hmm. the food court. And who is it? Dean and Susie Spanos. Now, okay. now, now work the timeline here with me. People. They, uh, hold on. You said Saturday, right? The grand opening was Friday. Okay. They were there on Thursday. Mm -hmm. So they don't play for another while. Mm -hmm. It's not like they have anything to do right now. They can't hire a coach at the moment. They can't mm -hmm. even interview coaches anymore. Right. But so, here's the thing. But here's uh -huh. the thing. Um, your team gets destroyed in Vegas on Thursday. Mm -hmm. You stick around Friday for the grand opening mm -hmm. of the hotel, right? 
Um, and then it's Saturday morning. Justin, you wake up. I mean, and, Justin Timberlake performed, man. You know, right? I'm like, not saying they shouldn't have gone. Yeah. I'm just, I'm just saying that that was Usher performing. I don't know. Did Usher res- perform in his residency? Ooh. All, I mean, all I'm getting at is this. Uh, I don't know their schedule. Okay. Yeah. I'm just getting. Yeah. Here's what I'm saying. Your your team gets destroyed on Thursday night. You hang out to party on Friday night. You wake up Saturday. You happen to hit the food court. Okay. And then JT catches him on video. Like, oh my God, look at this. And he said, and he like, you know, zooms in. He's like, look, Dean and Susie Spanos right here at the coffee shop. Right. And I'm like, okay, so what's the deal? And the intimation was, well, they got destroyed. And then the team flew home. And then the next day, the coach and the general manager got fired. And where was the boss? He was in Vegas. That's under the assumption that he is the boss. Well, it's under the assumption that, you know, he he's the kind of guy, Dean, I've always known this about him. He's very non-confrontational, you mm-hmm. know, doesn't want, doesn't want that heat. So, you know, go home, take the coach home, take, take the general manager home, take the team home, and then say to your kids, time to grow up, go fire him. Mm-hmm. I'm, mom and I are, mom and I are in Vegas. We're going to Justin Timberlake concert. And then we're going to go Correct. have coffee the next morning. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, that's the deal. Yeah. Owner doesn't want to do it. Doesn't want to have yeah. the blood on his hands. And I think this is where you were going with it you know, typical Spanos family, you know, someone does have to talk about the firings eventually. Mm-hmm. And a la AJ Preller, like, should we meet with media in person and put it out on, on, you know, all of our networks and platforms of, Hey, here's a video of, of, of the Spanos family getting questioned as to why they did. No, of course not. No. Why they, would I do that? No, they got to be in total control. Right. God forbid there's right. a live press conference with other right. human beings in the room. Right. So what they did, mm-hmm. well, not they, what John did was called in the beat reporters to the Chargers facility, said, bring out your recorders, no video. Go ahead and ask me questions in private, no cameras. Mm-hmm. And that's what they did. Right. I don't want any audio of this mm-hmm. and I don't want any video of me squirming. Okay. Right. You guys want to write a bunch of stuff? Go ahead. Yeah. But, I, but I'm not going to have in Vegas guys... and he didn't invite me. Right. And dad told me to go do the dirty work. So it's interesting because I had read an article today about how um, this is in the LA Times. This must be must have been one of the writers that was invited. Um, there was a story in the LA Times earlier today that said um, the Spanoses were saying, we don't know where this narrative comes from that we won't you know pay a coach top dollar. Like, where, where does that narrative come from? Come on. Come I'm on. like, Track I'm like, record, bro. Uh, well, I'm like, yeah, I'm like the, the, it's not, I mean, look, I could take credit for creating the narrative, but I don't think I've deserved the credit for creating the narrative or, or anybody who, who follows the chargers, um, whether you're a charger fan or you're a charger, you know, detractor, um, here, listen to this headline from the, uh, from the LA times chargers ownership insists money won't be a limiting factor in coach and GM search. And here's how it's written. John Spanos on Monday pushed back against the suggestion that the Chargers' financial situation could limit their searches for a general manager and head coach. And he said, quote, I want to know where the narratives come from. Mm. He said, I can tell you there have been no discussions internally about there being a max salary for two new hires. I mean, we're always going to do what's in the best interest of the team. So, okay. Um, Here's another quote from John Spanos. I can tell you. I've never felt or seen any limitations because of cash or any other reason. I have. I, I've seen limitations because of cash and money. Um, the fact that you and your family didn't have what it took to build a stadium in San Diego, but somehow you had the $650 million to move to LA. That seems like a money issue. Mm-hmm. You know? So John Spanos now has to start growing up. And you're gonna have to face the heat. This ain't San Diego anymore, buddy. This isn't a this isn't a city where your public relations director gets on the phone with the media and threatens to pull their credentials because you didn't like what they had to say, or your mom was driving down the road and she heard what you said on the radio and she doesn't want you at the games anymore. This is LA, Jack. It's a whole new world, brother. Mm-hmm. By the way, you see the way I just became like a pro wrestler. I don't you know, know where that came from. Jack and brother. Yeah. I mean, that's Jack. Yeah. yeah. All right, Alex, why don't you show us some of what uh, John Spanos yeah. is saying since he had to control the environment? So when I when I found these, these were some a little bit of ESPN, a little bit of Chargers.com, but now mm-hmm. every beat writer's releasing. So like now there's, you got that from LA Times. There's some on The Athletic, but this is what I found before this morning. Uh, 
John Spanos on the firing saying, quote, I think sometimes it's maybe the misses that help you grow the most, that you can learn from the most. And I think we always have to be pushing ourselves as ownership to get better, to be better. In my opinion, is everything starts with ownership. So I think ultimately we're responsible for everything. Yeah. <laughs> Duh. <laughs> God, like, do they do they write these lines for him? You know, like is there know. is there a handbook of things that he's supposed to say? Yeah, and then a little bit what you were talking about, but the the coaching and what they're looking for. Uh, I do think they're or hiring first time head coaches. I do think there's value in previous head coach experience. We all recognize that it helps having been through it before. I don't think it can be the end all be all and not looking at anyone but experienced coaches, but absolutely will factor in that. That's an added bonus. Obviously, I believe their last three. Norv was not a first-time head coach, right? No, Norv. Right, Norv had, first three. Norv had already coached the Redskins back then, and he had coached the Raiders. Yeah. And so Norv was not a first-time head coach when they hired him. I right. mean, it was a terrible hiring. Uh, sorry, the last Norv. Three. I know, yeah. You know, I know you listen. But the last, the last three, three coaches, been, right. right? Mike McCoy, here's, Anthony yeah. Lynn, and then uh, Brandon Staley. Correct. So what's next? John is a long one quote going into this search. Everything's a possibility. There have been no discussions internally about there being a max dollar amount. We're always going to do what's in the best interest of the team. There's a lot to be excited about here. we got a brand new facility opening up. That's going to be a big boost, a big plus for this organization. I think obviously the quarterback has a lot to do with that for a lot of people. I think that our style as owners, I think that helps as well in regards about what I said about our philosophy, which is we hire really good people and you let them do your, their jobs. You support them as best you can. You work cohesively together. Mm, that those and, those sentences don't make sense, do they? Correct. Like, no. Because <laughs> right. on one hand, on one hand, yeah. it's like, hey, we hire great people, we let them do their thing. On the other hand, it's like then we work cohesively together. Yeah, that's sort of the problem. Uh, so a, a lot a lot of what I was reading this morning more was, um, you know, ultimately I'm responsible, but he also really just pushed back on the narrative that he's the decision maker at all. Mm -hmm. And I'm trying to find the exact quotes because, oh, here you go. Um, saying, quote, I think my background only helps me in sort of being able to kind of evaluate where we are and really helps me in working with the head coach and GM. But I'm not making the decisions on, hey, coach, you have to start this player. I've never done that. My dad's never done that. We've never gone down and said, you've got to run this play or, hey, you have to draft this player because it. I think if you start doing that, what's that's a sign of is you probably don't have the right people in place if you're not trusting them to do your job. I believe in working together with them. I'm very involved because of my background, and I'm very fortunate that I've been able to work in the lowest level organization to where I am now. I think it helps me in working with people. So those are two mm -hmm. different things, right? So what are you involved with? Just motivating them? Like, honestly, I mean, like, if you, I'm not telling them who to draft. I'm not telling them who to play. But I'm very involved in what? Does well, that make any sense or am I reading it wrong? Like, no, I, I hear what you're saying. I mean, I hear the way you're reading it and I understand why you're reading it the way you are. I mean, I just think that, that um, he's probably right. John Spanos, that he did hire a good person in Tom Telesco and he did get out of the way and he did let Tom Telesco do his job. And Tom Telesco did a very good job. He, he drafted players that are um, frontline NFL starters who didn't just come in and play their rookie contracts and then leave. He was able to resign those guys. I think of Justin Herbert first and foremost, I think of Joey Bosa. I think of making a move to bring in Khalil Mack. Um, I think about a Derwin James. Um, I think about all the receivers that they've drafted. Linemen. I mean, listen, their roster, most people think is pretty darn good. If you got out of the way and let Tom Telesco do his job, then he did it. But for whatever reason, why? I'm, I mean, I think I know I have my own theory as to why. Um, they can never turn that frontline talent into healthy bodies in the most critical times of the year. And that's what happens. Why is that? Um, I mean, listen, they got out of the way and let Tom Telesco do his job for a long time without any playoff, you know, victories, without any deep playoff runs, just drafting and signing guys. That was enough. Winning was not paramount. I always said, if you are a, well, now nine and eight coach, you know, eight and nine coach, 10 and seven coach. If you're in the fringe and you make the playoffs like every other year, you could have a job for life. You should. You could you could have a job for life as a charge. Like, you know, like there's a certain level of, of organizations. It's like, hey, you know, you 
we're just not going to win with you. So we got to move on as, as successful as you are. Whereas I think with the Chargers, I think they're fine just being in the hunt. I don't think Dude, that they're – every team is. says, oh, it's championship or bust. But really, mm -hmm. is it? <laughs> the idea of a team – rock bottom is bad. Constantly picking in the top five of the draft is bad. If you find yourself at the end of the season in the hunt or with the chance to, to make the playoffs, yeah, you should be able to have a job forever. Even if – even if now after 10 years of that you don't win a Super Bowl – now we need to start talking. But if yeah. every year you're either in the playoffs or right on the outside looking in, that's all you ask for when the season starts. The whole only one team wins a Super Bowl every year. One, one. So, but if you in the mix, if you on the dance floor when the song comes on, then you got a chance. Mm. And so if I'm if I'm on the dance floor every year when the song starts, I like my chances. By the way, and I'm very well adversed into speaking about the Chargers and being a fan of the Chargers because I am a fan of the Chargers of the NFC. And the Vikings did that with Mike Zimmer. Mike Zimmer was a head coach for like eight or nine years. They were never Super Bowl contenders, but they were in the playoffs like every other year. Mm -hmm. They won the division like once, twice maybe in those eight or nine years. Mm -hmm. And the Will family, that's all they're looking for. Well, like that's I mean, literally all. The, they're look, talented. Do the look, Vikings not have a ton of talent everywhere? Yeah. The, the, the they Bears did that with Lovey <laughs> Smith and then fired him the year he won ten games. Look, like, look at Mike Tomlin. Mike Tomlin is a guy. The the, the Steelers Great pride themselves. Day. The Steelers pride themselves on in our organization's history. There's only been three head coaches. We're not like everybody else. We don't change head coaches every other year. We are stability, and stability is what wins championships. And so. Now, as as so many people are calling for Mike Tomlin's firing in Pittsburgh, uh, that's an organization that's like, no, we're not doing that. That's Good, not the way yeah. we do things. Hey, how about this one, though? Speaking of since back to the Chargers, I saw this um, on L.A. Football Network, LA, LAFBnetwork.com. Listen to this poll question. Is the Los Angeles Chargers coaching job the most attractive in the NFL? Because that's what people say. Oh my God, the it's the best job. It, Sean Payton wanted it last year. Bill Belichick is going to want it this year. I mean, Rex Ryan is on ESPN saying it's guaranteed done deal already in stone that Belichick is leaving New England and going to the Chargers. That's what Rex Ryan is saying. Ooh. So um, the question is, is the Los Angeles Chargers coaching job the most attractive in the NFL? And the answers are, yes, Justin Herbert is all you need. And the second answer is no bad situation. What are the other jobs available? Right. That's my question. Because they say, they say Washington is going to come open. Carolina is already open. Uh, Vegas. Who, Vegas. Sh Vegas should be open. So that's three. The, people are saying the Jets might be open. No thanks to that uh, one either. Too, by I don't. The way. I don't know if I'll buy that one yet. I think New England. I think New, New England, England be open. Oh uh, yeah, mm -hmm. New England. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure. Uh, you know, of of those five teams I just named, mm -hmm. this is going to sound insane too. I think New England's the best job. Well, what if New Pittsburgh best job. finally lets go of Mike Tomlin? That nope. sounds like a job. Scott just said that's a job for life. There's only been three of them. Yep. <laughs> yeah, man. But you don't want to be a head coach for twelve years? Come on over. <laughs> you come, but you're coming in behind again. Uh, but Mike Tomlin was on the staff when they no, he was he the wasn't on there. Defense, he was the Vikings defensive coordinator. Okay. Yeah, that was Bill Cower before him. And right, he, I yeah. thought he was on Bill Cower's staff, and then they no. just gave it to him. Okay, so mm -hmm. didn't know. Well, and the other thing about the 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 Steelers firing a guy like Tomlin is is that they are the Rooney Rule. The, there would be no you know initiative in the NFL to hire minority coaches if it wasn't for the Rooney family that owns the Steelers. So for them right. to hire an African-American coach and have him consistently for all these years and then possibly fire him? And just, have him winning. Have I mean, him, and when, he's won a Super Bowl. And when it comes to the Chargers, it's really, do you believe John Spanos when he says, I, I hire you and then I let you do your job? If no. that's accurate, if that's accurate, no. then maybe that job is desirable. But if I'm coming in here, and it's the AJ Preller, Bob Melvin situation where AJ Preller is telling him, "Hey, I can let you, I'll let you do your job, but then I'm still going to micromanage you." That's not very desirable, is it? To have no, John Spano telling you what to do. When he says, "Let you do your job," I, I think he, he what that the sneaky underline of that is, "Yeah, I'm not going to be in there helping you draw plays, but I'm going to tell you we ain't got money for this." But let we me ain't ask got you money another for question. That. It ain't a blank yeah. check. Let me ask you another question. Mm -hmm. 
was the Chargers not one of the most desirable desirable jobs when Mike McCoy took over? Was the Chargers not one of the most desirable jobs when Anthony Lynn took over? Was the Chargers not one of the most desirable jobs when Brandon Staley took over? And let me ask you this. Who was the quarterback that they have an established Pro Bowl All-Pro quarterback every single time for those jobs? Every yeah, every one of those coaches had either Phillip Rivers or now, obviously, Justin And Herbert. back in the day, they had Gates. You know, they had, you know, they had, they've always had talent. They've always had legit talent on paper. The Chargers, it, they, it's literally a broken record with the Chargers. Every national media picks them to be the sneaky Super Bowl pick. And every national media member says that's the most desirable job ever because they have this all, all star, all pro quarterback. It's been the same thing for four different, like, Four different iterations. They probably said the but same now thing. Now that general manager, the general manager, the people who, the person who chose all those players, he's gone right. too, though. Right, right. So yeah, that that's a that's a big thing too. Who's the GM? Well, um, I know we've got some Austin Eckler, and I want to hear what he had to say. Do we have time in this segment, or should we come back and, and play Austin Eckler coming back? Let's come back. Okay, let's do that. All right, listen, stick around. Um, I want to thank one of our great partners, and that's 7 Mile Casino, 7milecasino.com. If you're looking this holiday season, I want to play blackjack and poker. I don't want to go to a place that has 5 million slot machines, and I don't want to go to a place that smells like cigarette smoke. I don't need the concert venue. I don't need the pool scene. I don't need the buffet. I want to have a really nice dinner at Sammy's Restaurant and Bar or a great brunch on the weekends. I want to play blackjack, and I want to play poker and other table games. I want to watch football games. I want a convenient location, seven minutes south of downtown San Diego. I don't want to schlep all the way out to East County. Everything I just said, that's why Seven Mile Casino is the place for you this holiday season. Seven Mile Casino, sevenmilecasino.com. What did Austin Eckler say? Next. All right, great friends. A little time out here, a little halftime action. want to thank a couple of our great partners. I'll start off with Seven Mile Casino, and here's why. If you want to play blackjack or poker, you do not have to schlep all the way out to East County, find parking in this mega parking structure. You're not interested in the concert. You're not interested in the buffet. You're not interested in the pool scene. You just want to play. See, at Seven Mile Casino, there's not thousands of slot machines. There's blackjack tables and poker tables and Sammy's Restaurant and Bar and the best brunch in South County and a nice stiff drink in a smoke-free environment seven minutes south of downtown San Diego. Come on down. Have fun, enjoy, be a winner at Seven Mile Casino. Any problems with gambling, you call 1-800-GAMBLER. Hey, another partner that I want to thank, and I think we're going to expand and we're going to do a lot more with this guy in the next year, and that's Brett Weiss, who's completely out of his mind from Mushroom Life. He was on yesterday. If you missed him on the uncensored portion of the podcast, fucking guy's out of his mind, um, but we love him for it. Mushroom Life, L-Y-F-E, mushroomlife.com slash great friends, or use the QR code. You spend $50 on your Mushroom Life products. Brett will send you an additional $50 and you go, well, what's this all about? And yesterday, Brett was talking about the mushroom coffee. And, you know, he's got this literature so that you can read about what are the different kinds of mushrooms and what are their medicinal benefits. And that's what this is, plant-based medication. And I know a lot of our listeners have already had a, you know, they've already used it for whether it's mood support or sex drive or sleep. Or you know what? They even have a product called Euphoria and it gets you fucked up. Okay. Mushroomlife.com slash great friends. Check them out. And hey, happy holidays on behalf of my man, Gary Cooper, Mountain Trust Realty Services. If you're thinking and you just want to have the discussion about buying a house right now with these rates and with these prices, let's have that conversation because you know what's going to happen. When the rates go down, the prices are going to shoot up even more. Let's talk to a pro, Gary Cooper, Mountain Trust Realty Services, 858-376-1299. Let's get back to the second half of the show. Hey, great friends. What's going on? It's Kaplan and crew with Grande and the Brown Man from the Seven Mile Casino Studios, sevenmilecasino.com. I mentioned at the, last, uh, at the end of the last segment, I wanted to hear what Chargers running back Austin Eckler had to say because he's usually very outspoken. Um, pretty much tried to talk his way out of the Chargers locker room this past off season. And he's not had a good year of <laughs> a bunch of money. So I'm curious to hear what his uh, thoughts might be. Everything we were talking about earlier about how the Chargers job is considered like one of the best in football. And Alex, you just said it perfectly to me. Wasn't the Chargers job, one of the most attractive jobs in the NFL when Mike McCoy was hired. Wasn't it one of the best jobs in the league when Anthony Lynn was hired. Wasn't it supposed to be an amazing opportunity when Brandon Staley was hired? 
So even if you hire Bill Belichick and you look and you go, well, there's Justin Herbert and there's Keenan Allen and there's Mike Williams and there's Austin Eckler and there's, you know, Joey Bosa and there's Khalil Mack and there's Derwin James. And you just started going down the list. You go, wow, what a team. We're ready to win. Uh, all it's going to take is Bill Belichick. Mm -hmm. all, all it's going to take is the greatest coach in the history of the NFL. If we could, we'd go get Don Shula, but all we got access to is Bill Belichick. If we could, we'd go get Vince Lombardi because money doesn't matter here at the Chargers. We go get Lombardi, but he ain't available. So who is? Belichick. And I'm telling you right now, guys, uh, with Rex Ryan saying it on ESPN, it's already a done deal. Belichick to the Chargers. I very much believe that Rex Ryan is right. Why? Come on. Why? Come on, man. Come on, man. Come on, man. For real. You think Rex Ryan right? For real. <laughs> For real. Why you gotta you, you don't think Rex Ryan can ever be right about anything because he's got a foot of nah, dog. I love I see. I didn't even go there. I, well, didn't I, mean, I, just, I think he's discredited by many people. I thought maybe perhaps I, because he's no, he I love Rex thing. Ryan. How you I'm feel a Rex about Ryan. Feet? I'm a Rex Ryan fan. The Ryan family has been very good to the city of Chicago. I got no oh, yeah. beef with Rex Ryan. Okay. I don't think he's plugged in. He hates Bill Belichick. Mm -hmm. Like that's not a that's not a like a unknown thing. Oh, he so, hated I, Brandon Staley too. Like hated Brandon Staley. Yeah, he told him go back to Division Two college. Like you don't belong in the NFL. He so, said his wife can coach better than Brandon Staley. Right. I don't think he's plugged in to what the Chargers are doing. I just I, I just. But like, you know. why does Scott all of a sudden agree with it? Like, why would they all of a sudden? That's why I like. I'm curious. So here's because, why. Here's why I agree with it. Yeah. Because um, I disagree with you, Browner. That that Rex Ryan is not plugged in. I will to tell the you. Organization? No, I will to the to the coaching the coaching world the well, coaching course, yes, profession. Yes. So I, I would. Think, I agree with that. So I think that Rex Ryan is very much tuned in. Um, I think that when you're working at ESPN in Bristol and you've got Adam Schefter over here and you've got NFL insiders, BC and D over here, and you've got friends in the league that are still coaching around the league. And you know, a couple of owners, I honestly think that Rex Ryan has probably heard from multiple places that Belichick to the chargers is done as for why I believe it is because for someone to go on TV and say it, it could be outrageous. And by the way, no one's going to hold him to the same standard that they yeah, hold yeah. a guy like uh, uh, what's that guy's name from the MLB network that said that Otani was on his way to um, Morosi. Yeah. Morosi. Or when Shams Sharania said that, um, that Damian Lillard was like going to Toronto. Like, and he, he tweeted that Ken Rosenthal said Max Scherzer to the Padres. Right. Or John I mean, Heyman said Aaron judge to the giants. Yeah. Yes. So, so these guys who are the insiders that have to break news, they're held to this higher standard. Rex Ryan, who I think you're, you're kind of giggling at, you're like, yeah, former NFL head coach, a little bit of success, football family, and now more of a character on ESPN, not so much an insider of information. Yeah, I right. agree with that. Yeah. So I, 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 don't, I don't think that if that, if that was a, a balloon to be, you know, popped for people to find out, oh, surprise, they wouldn't. I, I, I would think he would hold his water on that. I don't think that's something that he would be, you know, saying on television today. I don't. I think that's news you hold until the day the Patriots are eliminated and Bill Belichick's gone. Then you break the news as Rex Ryan or Adam Schefter or ESPN as a whole. I don't think ESPN would let him say that if that if they had any concrete information on that. So let me ask um, you a question. I completely Thanks. disagree. I think that the more he says and the more outrageous he is and the more um, clickbaity he is, the the more they want him to do that. And nobody at ESPN is going to be like, wait, 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 stop. You're going to you're going to say that Belichick to the Chargers is done deal. Oh, don't say that. No, in fact, they're going to say the opposite. Don't no, say that. Yeah. Actually say that. That's that's good. Why I but agree, I, though, to Alex's yeah. question, why I agree. I told you guys that I've already started to hear that calls are being made by yeah. Belichick's people mm -hmm. to coaches around the, the league. Hey, Bill's going to be moving. Bill's going to build a new coaching staff. Would you have interest in joining the Belichick coaching staff? Those calls are being made, and I can tell you them as, that is a fact. I just can't tell you why I know that. I just have a follow-up question. Mm -hmm. I have another question, too. I, Go ahead. Are the Chargers <laughs> hiring Bill Belichick, the head coach? 
Are the Chargers hiring Bill Belichick, the general manager? Or are they hiring Bill Belichick both? I don't have any information other than an opinion, and my right. opinion is both. That ain't my question. My question is this, sir. Mm. Since, since you, you, know, you know, but you don't know nothing. Who's paying them? Because it ain't going to be cheap. So no, which, you which remember guy? Scott's, Scott's the quote who Scott just read. Last segment. Yeah, John money, Spanos says. Money's no problem. We're no in L.A. Object. now, baby. Yeah, yeah, money is no object. Here, here, John Spanos today in the L.A. Times. Quote, I can tell you, I've never felt any or seen any limitations because of cash or any other reason. And in fact, John Spanos says in the L.A. Times today, I want to know where narratives come from. Um, uh, you lease your facility, you lease your stadium, you've only hired first time head coaches. Yeah, you've spent money on roster because you're you legal, to. you kind of legally have to, correct? Uh, and then, so, but that, so NFL rosters are salary capped, nothing else in the league is. You can spend as much as you want on trainers, right? You can spend as much as you want on coaches, you could spend as much as you want on facilities, you could spend as much as you want on nutritionists, on airplanes, on a hotels, on anything you, you want. It. And that's that's where the narrative comes from. Oh, Get cheap. Oh, Get yeah, cheap, Holmes. Yeah. So then he should have like somebody should have answered that for him. Right. This you is know? why we need to go to press conferences more. This is why we need to attend press conferences. Because the well, follow up question would have been, uh, have you ever had the highest paid coach in the league? Or or have you ever a had a top ten? Coach? Yeah. Because that's what to get Bill Belichick to coach your team when the the Washington team will have all the money to say, hey, don't go there. Come here. Here's $18 million to coach our team. You ain't got to move that far. You can take a train. Can we, we also talk about the other side, though? The Belichick side? Mm -hmm. Like, why would he do this? Why would you I... go? Why would you go from royalty in the NFL? Of the Patriots. I mean, he started the royalty, right? But like right. he does he have the royalty. But Bob, has, but Bob Craft, Bob you're Kraft. saying ownership right. of, of New England is considered top I mean, because the Patriots are top like top three in, in terms right. of value. Yes. Right. Right. Yeah. right. So why would you go from the royalty of the Patriots and prestige of the Patriots and this this that you created with Tom Brady of Correct. this eliteness to Dean Spanos and John Spanos? And the only answer i could even think of is they're just going to give him the keys to the nissan right. and give him justin herbert and let's go right i, I agree i mean the, nothing the against nissans like it's a no. great car but it's not no, but that's a you dig. know that's a dig. it's not a rolls that's royce dog well, it's, no, not, I mean, it's that, not a it's not a top dude, it's not a high-end vehicle dude when when norv turner right. took over when norv turner took over the chargers I can remember vividly the front page of the san diego union tribune back then we all still read hard copy newspapers and they said they've given him the keys to the Ferrari. There was there were literally there was a color photo of like what keys to a Ferrari looked like. Mm -hmm. And it was the Chargers have given the keys to the Ferrari to Norv Turner. Here's listen, if the Chargers go spend 12, 15, 20 million dollars on Belichick, the coach and mm -hmm. general manager and get out of his way. OK, let me tell you what's going to happen to the Chargers. They're going to look like the Patriots. Yeah. Exactly. Because because we've talked about it a million times. Yes, he's the coach of the team, but he's earned the right to be the general manager and his personnel de decisions have been very suspect along the way. And the fact is they haven't won jack squat since Tom Brady left. Brady went on and won a Super Bowl with a lousy organization. You talk about going from royalty down to the dregs of the NFL. That's what Tampa Bay was. And that's what their ownership was considered. And he turned that franchise in one year into a Super Bowl winner. And so now... Belichick, the, the question, why? Why would Belichick consider this? Why would Bill Belichick consider working for the Spanoses? Why would he want to work for the Chargers when he can look at the history himself? Ego. Okay, Ego. Did, but because, the, because you're one guy who believes that you still have the answers and you believe that, hey, you know what? My time came and, and went in New England. But you put me in, in, in San Diego with the Chargers. You, you give me Justin where? Herbert. Oh wait! Oh oh, they move. <laughs> you you put me in Costa Mesa with yeah. the Chargers. You give nope. me Herbert. Oh, oh, oh. oh wait a second! They're moving. They're moving. Where are they? You, you move? Are they going to El Segundo? Yes. 
Okay. You put they me in El Segundo w- with the Lakers, and I will prove to you yet again <laughs> that I, Bill Belichick, am the greatest coach that ever lived because I'll coach the Lakers and LeBron. Hmm. No, seriously. It's his ego, Browner. Belichick's ego is we won all these Super Bowls. People now think I couldn't do it without Brady. They've been right. But if I go to the Chargers, a bad organization, and I take a kid who's never been, he's been in one playoff game and he's 0 and 1 and he had a 27 nothing lead. Me, what I know, the, the rings that I have, I can turn that locker room and turn that franchise into a championship contending team. And then I could ride off into the sunset saying, not only did I win a Super Bowl, six of them in New England, but I turned a crappy franchise around. I'm out. Yeah. That's why. But okay. I hear you. I hear everything you're saying. Can I offer you a franchise in the worst position? The Carolina Panthers and David Tepper have more money to spend. So now, hold on, hold on. There's a second team mm-hmm. with more money to spend. Okay. More resources. Okay. The Washington team is getting a new stadium. Okay. Like, I can offer you more teams mm-hmm. who are far lower in the dirt for him to go there and turn that around than to go to L.A. or Costa Mesa or El Segundo or wherever and turn that that around because that has way more structure and walls around it than you those me, other you teams. Trying to figure you out, I'm, trying to figure out a, I'm trying to figure out a way to say this that's not demeaning to Justin Herbert at all. But I I know it's going to come off as I'm trying to slight Justin Herbert, but I'm not. It's like you really, really, really got to believe in Justin Herbert, in my opinion, to choose the Chargers over the Commanders, in my opinion. Because I think the Commanders will literally give you whatever Anything. you want. Anything. And as a, and then you will have resources up the wazoo. And yeah, you Correct. play in the crap stadium, but you really got to believe in Justin Herbert and your inability to find a quarterback on your own because there is no other reason, I guess LA, DC, but like other than that, like why else would I not choose Magic Johnson and these guys? Thank you. And they're going to give me the keys to their car Mm -hmm. as opposed to the Chargers and everything that we know about Dean Spanos. And it's not just like a recent Dean Spanos. This is since he's taking over Mm -hmm. the Chargers. So you and I'm not trying. I get Justin Herbert's very good. And I'm not trying to make it seem like why wouldn't like it's a no brainer. I'm sure some people are yelling at their radio and TV right now saying it's an absolute no brainer that you would choose Justin Herbert over Sam Howell or whatever crap they have. I just think, in my opinion, you really, really really got to believe in Justin but Herbert to choose see, the commanders over them. And this is where I disagree with that, too. To choose the Chargers for, over the commanders, you're saying? Correct. Because for this particular situation, it has nothing to do with the quarterback. It's the rest of the organization. I think it has everything to do with the quarterback. Because what's gonna, the narrative What's the narrative with Bill Belichick? I do Dude, they just better. showed it on the broadcast, bro. I'll show you. Like, it's not... Like they literally showed this graphic on the broadcast. It is the narrative with Bill Belichick, and that's going to be the narrative of Bill Belichick until he wins without Tom Brady. Well, let's take a like, look at what we're looking at here. What is this? This is from the game on uh, yeah. Sunday against the Chiefs. Yeah. Okay, so take a look at this with Tom okay. Brady, 266 and 75, without him, 43 and 52. That now is let me the say narrative. Th- 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 and let me say this with that graphic, if I told you. Here's a number two pick in this year's draft with the most loaded set of quarterbacks this time around than a while. Mm-hmm. Last time we picked a quarterback, we ended up with the last guy in the first round. This time, we're going to be picking with an opportunity, depending on who you ask, getting the best guy of the set. So if I'm in New England with the number two pick, and regardless of how it shakes out, it's going to be Drake May or it's going to be Caleb Williams. Where am I going? Because I'm at an A-plus organization. Everything here is A-plus because I helped grow it. Now, I'm going to go to this place where I don't know what's behind the doors. I don't know what's behind the walls. And now I also know they don't even have the money to fix what's behind the doors and what's behind the walls. Because as much as people are plugged in, Bill Pelichick not stupid. He's not dumb. He knows Dia's trying to sue them out of the, out of the, to the moon. Like, these, these, these are things people don't know. 
So for me, this would be the dumbest thing Bill Belichick could do because he wouldn't have the resources. You can have Justin Herbert, but when you're in cap hell and you got to get rid of Khalil Mack or you got to get rid of uh, 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 Keenan Allen and you're relying on a guy who breaks his neck every season or another guy who's a bust at wide receiver and another guy who doesn't want to play for you at running back. So now you're in a situation where, yeah, you got Justin Herbert, but all that other stuff is gone. Mm. Yeah, yeah, actually, bring, you, yeah, yeah, you bring up a good point. I think both of you guys do because Alex is right. I mean, it, the there's so much talk about the reason Belichick would like the Chargers is because they have an established Pro Bowl caliber quarterback. But I, I Browner, you could sell me very easily on Washington. I mean, seriously, yeah. I, I don't, I don't see. Uh, I mean, again, Rex Ryan started all this by saying he knows it. It's done. It's concrete, and I actually kind of buy it. I buy the story. Maybe it'll be wrong. Maybe it'll I be don't right. not we'll buy it. I would just be very surprised by it. Yeah, and that's not. Probably it's, that's not. I will. I will only work on your staff if you go. For, if you go for the play to charge a job. Hmm. It just. It, just, it would be. Field. It would just be so anti everything. Right. Spanos. Right. But but everything. but it would. But it would also say you know what we're desperate now. When we're trying we, something we, different. We finally. tried with McCoy. We tried right. with Anthony Lynn. We tried with Brandon Staley. We tried with young first-time head coaches. It didn't work. It didn't work. It didn't work. You know what? Yeah. We're gonna we're gonna go for it with Belichick. But I'll this, tell you this right now: <laughs> careful what you wish for, because you're gonna Dude, get. Because okay. if you get them and you pay them, get ready because it'll be it'll <clears> look <throat> no different than than what happened in New England. Or excuse this me, what my, happened in Vegas. This will be my last comment on this, and, and whatever. Direct question to you two, yes or no. Does that strike you as something that they would now be willing to do as an act of desperation? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. How about you? Okay. Almost cursed. No, sir. No, it doesn't. Because <laughs> the money's still going to be the same. Yeah. Right. I mean, well, like, I'm, money's not a problem for them. I'd be very, very paying, curious to see who that offensive coordinator is. Because if it's Matt Patricia, you know. Sound Dude, I, think I, listen, I think I know who it is. I think I know who it is. Who it? Who is it? I think I know who it is. I ain't gonna say though. I'll tell you who it is. Hey, so what? So what did so what did Eckler say though? Because Eckler is usually pretty outspoken about the Chargers. What what is Eckler having to say on his podcast? Can we hear this? Um, it sucks. It sucks because you know I've been with Brandon and Tom. Tom. Tom's the reason I'm even here talking to you guys today. You know yeah. because. Because Tom, Tom's a guy that's you know has his, the biggest part set in that ninety man roster, and he decided to put me on there, number three, Austin Eckler, back in the day, um, a few years ago, and so just my relationship with Tom over the years has has been pretty pretty tight because of that, and you know he obviously believed in me again to to bring me back for another contract, and then you know the success that I've been able to have with Brandon on the second the back half of my career as well, um, and it sucks that because no, no one ever thought it would come down to to what we're going through right now. You have so much respect for these, these men, like these are like your coworkers, you know, we spend so much time together trying to perfect, right. What we're trying to put on the field, trying to figure out how it's going to work better, you know, going through the off season and, you know, keep it in touch. And so it, it really does suck. Um, just on a personal level. And mm -hmm. I always like that. It reminds me of what kind of what you were, what I accuse you of being guilty of Scott, like mm -hmm. apologizing for saying someone should be fired. Mm -hmm. Like when you're a player on a team, there's only two ways to go burn the bridge that's or it. be like the nicest dude yeah, ever. That's it. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know. Hey, yeah. um, let me just say this before we hit this break. Um, is Paul Vaden joining us? He, the champ is yeah. going to join us next. So we've been just trying to do us. these. Say again, I'm sorry. He just confirmed with it. He's, okay. he's good to go. Yeah. We've been trying to do these great friends catch-ups. And um, we mentioned that we haven't spoken or seen Paul Vaden in a really long time. San Diego's first and only born and bred world boxing champion. So the champ is going to come by and hang out for just a little bit. And I have no idea because he listens every day. So who knows what he's going to come in here and talk about. Uh, stick around for that. One quick mention here. Uh, Browner, I got to get you reconnected with Mushroom Life, dog. I don't I don't know when you're going to go see Brett Weiss, but we got to get you reconnected, man. If you if you don't have all your, your Mushroom Life products, bro. I mean, I gotta load up. Oh, Browner, you were here yesterday. I had I had extras of your of your package. Yeah, come on, I, man. I, I couldn't carry nothing else from your house yesterday. Sustained energy right here. I got the sustained right. energy. Just side note, yeah. the ropes broke on my way home. Oh no. Wait, 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 wait. The the Peloton was taken? Yeah. Is the Peloton smashed now? 
Okay. When we come don't, back. Don't, oh, don't. No. <laughs> oh no. Oh <laughs> no. Mushroomlife.com slash great friends. Mushroomlife.com slash great friends. You buy fifty dollars of mushroom life products. <laughs> Brett Weiss is gonna send oh, you fifty dollars <laughs> of additional mushroom life products. You're gonna get all the literature about what the medicinal benefits of these mushrooms are. And for those of you that want to use them in a different way, there is a euphoria product. Be careful with it. Mushroomlife.com slash great friends. What happened to Browner and the Peloton next? Hey, great friends. What's going on? Kaplan and crew with Grande and the Brown Man in the Seven Mile Casino Studio, sevenmilecasino.com. If you're just getting with us. Browner uh, said that he had gone over to Alex's house yesterday and he said at the end of it, he goes, and the ropes broke. And I went, oh no, because I had this in my notes today to talk about. Remember yesterday when Browner said that he wanted to buy Alex's Peloton and Alex said, if you can get it out of my house before my wife arrives home, you can mm -hmm. have it for free. You just <laughs> pick up the payments. You know, he still owes, let's call it $700 on the Peloton. You don't have to buy it for $700. You could take it for free, get it out of my place. My wife's going to be ecstatic. You're going to have a brand new Peloton because the thing's never been used. Um, and just pick up, just pick that's up back, the those backhanded, Those backhanded compliments against Browner. He's yeah. Well, it's true. I mean. Uh, a plus backhanded, man. A anybody, plus backhanded, this guy Anybody here. who's willing to give Yikes. away their Peloton for free, that tells you they don't use it. Brother, you were married once. Yeah. You know, you don't have a say in things. No, I realize that. But if but okay. if either of you used it, you would have kept it. So, Browner, um, Paul, the ultimate Vaden, the former light middleweight champion, um, is going to join us here in a matter of moments. And the champ has been around the show for honestly, like the better part of the last 20 years. And I get a lot of text messages from the champ. He listens to a lot of the show, man. So, Champ, good afternoon. Did you happen to catch the story about how Browner was getting Alex's Peloton? No, actually, first off, uh, great to see the three of you. Um, I didn't get that one, uh, unfortunately. Uh, so can you please fill me in? Guys? Okay, so... I don't know what details I'm allowed to share, so I'll let Browner yeah, talk. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> oh, you know the discretion that I operate on this show is at top secret level. You know, okay. he's got three cell phones now, champ. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, and four kids. You know. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm almost up to a, heard yeah. yeah, I'm almost up to a phone per kid. Yeah. yeah. So, okay. at this point, what I can say is this. I picked up the, the, the bike from Alex yesterday. I had no idea how heavy it was. Did you guys take it one. apart? Did you guys take the monitor off? Did you take the seat off? No. It's no. a black and a Mexican. We ain't dissembling nothing. We yeah. don't get it down the stairs in the yeah. full assembled manner without undoing anything. Because then you would I have did to tell, I did tell Browner, you're probably going to need a truck. In his defense, he did. Mm -hmm. But again, as a black man who was moving before moving, I mm -hmm. went, nah, I can move some stuff around in my car. It'll fit. Don't worry about it. Okay. <laughs> I some stuff around in my car. <laughs> Which okay. literally, that's what I did. Bro, I got All four right. car seats. I got mm -hmm. four Bro, car seats in my car. He showed up. He showed up, Paul, with all four car seats still in the car. Not I was like, this either. is not going to work, dude. At the minimum, you put your no. all, you come in empty, you put the back seats down, and maybe we can squeeze it in there. Maybe. They're no. a lot bigger than you think. They're a lot bigger than you think. Right. Bro, I'm not taking no car seat out because you got to put it back in. True. So yeah, I they're a pain it. in the ass. They're hard. <laughs> Listen, I would have rather wheeled that. I would have wheeled that bike all the way to where it was going before right. I took one of them seats out. Okay. Right. right. So we we start attempting I because I think from an insurance situation, he's like, I'm not doing any of this because I don't want this to snap in him and be like, you broke it. I'm bringing it back. <laughs> so I'm strapping this thing in. Okay. Dude. Right. Dude, hey, this explain, is from two and a half from when I put the, the Christmas rope. tree on top of my Ex car. Yeah, explain the rope. This wasn't <laughs> so, a bungee cord. This nah. wasn't a hardcore fishing line. This nah. wasn't like no. This was legitimately like 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 ribbon, like yeah. ribbon paper. Yeah, yeah. So it's the stuff that you the twine that you use to carry a Christmas tree home from the Christmas tree lot. This is the leftover that I had cut to take the Christmas tree out. <laughs> So this was a, I knew I had it in there. 
So I basically, I Jimmy the whole thing. Rope here, uh, Jimmy this, uh. He done, he then, because it keeps falling out as I'm trying to tie it up. He basically right. takes one piece that's still tied up from when the Christmas tree was there, hooks it to the bottom and goes, see, I did this. I'm like, yeah, that actually works. That holds. And then I'm going to get back to that later. So I'm like, cool. We got it. Bam. I drive off. I'm doing two miles an hour. And I'm going slow. And people honking me. And, you know, it's mm -hmm. North Park. So folks are just losing their mind because I'm going slow. People are trying to get home. It's dark. And I get, like, maybe two blocks from where I'm going. And I just hear pop. Uh -oh. And in the back, the, the hatch goes up. So now, because I had, I couldn't close the back door. The right. hatch was like a little open. So I hear the pop and I see the hatch just go up. And I'm like, oh no. And before I could pull over, I hear another pop. pop. Mm. So now I just hit the brake park and I'm sprinting around the corner of the car. Like, don't fall out. Don't fall out. As the, as the front part with the monitor, because you remember how we put it yeah. in. At the front part of the monitor starts slipping out. I grab it by the handle the only part that doesn't snap is the part that you hooked in that was already <laughs> assembled because if that. that had to happen bro that thing would have been tumbling in the street right so i'm talking about by the by an inch yeah. saved it damn you made it you make it home it made it to where it was gonna go okay <laughs> not home i say that yeah. but to where it was gonna go yeah, yeah. it made it to where it was going Oh, yeah, yeah. Jesus, man. Well, the champ is here. Paul Vaden had to sit through that whole story. Champ, how the hell are you, man? I'm good. No, um, so just hearing that, uh, that's why I don't move anything, man. Uh, <laughs> I, 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 nothing. Uh, moving is like one of my least favorite feelings. I just get this cringe if I have to move something. My mom just uh, yesterday uh, had to move her uh, kitchenette set. And so, you make sure that she gets the proper moving team to do it. Cause I, 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 yeah, that's, that's not my. And did we, did very we lose stressful it? and uh, just driving. Like you just said at this time of the year, can you can yeah, me? We got you. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Um, you, you know, you get on the road and, and then at this time of the year, nighttime and the holiday season, people are stressed. Like you just said, Brown are trying to get home. You're going two miles an hour. You know, people honking, yelling. Yeah, they didn't mm -hmm. want they, Browner. They didn't want any of that smoke, though. If you got out of that yeah, car, well, listen, they already know what time it is, man. So, uh, yeah, when they catch, they catch yeah, up yeah, with yelling, me, yelling, get professional movers. <laughs> yeah, listen, they, people catch up with me. All they do, they glare and they keep going because you know, mm -hmm. listen, I ain't the one. No, no, no. That's the thing. It's funny. You let, yeah. It's like you know what they they do that. They do all the yelling stuff. They go like, right, oh, I think I'll keep going. <laughs> 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 Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, I'll keep going. Paul, the yeah. ultimate Vaden is here. The former champ is in the house today. Um, hey, champ, um, real quick, before we, again, I just want to, one other thing before we get to you, what's going on in your world, and, and we do a great friend's catch-up. Right. Um, is it true that you were driving down the road the other day and you heard the story about stomach issues on the show? Is this true? Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> you guys. You guys had me on the. I'm driving in traffic, coming back. Had a long drive coming back from Rancho Santa Fe, and you guys had me. All three of you, you guys had me cracking up. I mean, I was just dying. I know people. Most of my time when I'm, I'm listening, to you guys, I'm on the road, you know, and I'm in traffic. Something's wrong oh. with that man because I will literally be sitting there cracking up. And that's the, this is the second time you guys had a conversation about that. I remember one time uh, Cap had an issue that he <laughs> that he had to, you know, that situation going on. But yes, I did. I heard that one. <laughs> wow. and, let me, and let me say this. I've never had this situation. <laughs> <laughs> let, me, let me be clear. But I felt all, I felt your pain. <laughs> well, this is a fine-tuned professional athlete over here. That's why he doesn't have, you know, he has. Man, it was so funny, strength. Dude. Oh, my God. It was so funny. 
<laughs> I like how Paul says, like, I've heard you guys talk about it twice, and it's like, well, we, it's been a lot more than twice, Paul. Yeah. It's been a lot yeah. more. Than we also twice. have an ocean pooping story. There's a lot of poop yeah. stories on this show. Yeah. yeah, there are a lot of stories. Uh, the oh. champ is here, Paul Vaden. Paul, the ultimate Vaden, is here. Long time, great friend. Uh, Paul, I always, I've always said this, you know, he's the only guy ever from San Diego to become a world boxing champion. You know, he was the IBF Intercontinental Junior Middleweight Champion. Um, and just had an incredible career. And a matter of fact, uh, champ, it wasn't that long ago that, um, you know, there was a, uh, you know, I'll call it an anniversary of something that, you know, tragically mm. happened in your boxing career that you and I talked on that day. So, yeah. um, it, it's, but I always love your social media posts because you're not a guy who lives in the past, but you are someone who kind of just says, Hey, this is part of my past. And I always love when you post things from your boxing wow. career. That's super cool, man. Thank you. Yeah, it's just important. I mean, it 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 because it, it's going to help someone else. <clears throat> oh man, now uh, about particular things, history. I'm sorry. No, your connection is you're kind of you're buffering a little bit on us, but that's all right. Stuff happens. Uh -oh. Keep going. Okay. Keep going, champ. No, I, I, I was just saying that um, it's important to always reflect. Um, and, and you see where you uh, were and to, to see where you currently are. If things are great or if things you have times you go through uh, torrential storms in life. And, and, and so, yeah, I was reaching out to you uh, December 5th uh, when um, uh, my opponent who passed away, uh, that was the day that he. Yeah, that was the day that he, uh, he that got, was the anniversary. Uh, yeah. And, um, yeah, I wanted to, uh, you know, to share so yeah uh, but at the end of the day it's always about uplifting people and, and, and moving on because someone is always dealing with something that's even worse or uh or something that they have to endure and so i always believe that um a part of your script is it's important that you um that you reflect and, and, and that you uh that you that you give a message a positive message of, of getting to the other side of things so that's what that was about yeah. And, and, and Paul, I would love for you to tell us like what's going on in your life now, because I, I, we haven't seen each other in a little while. Yeah. Um, and I follow you on social media and here's what I think is going on Okay. for a guy who was a former boxing champion who dealt with, you know, the tragedy in the ring that you dealt with that, you know, that anniversary happened on December 5th. Mm -hmm. You've told the story. There's been documentaries done about it, et cetera. Um, then, you know, I always, when I first met you, you know, you were into coaching and I, I, you know, coaching individuals in boxing and, and now I'm um, having published a book, you know, the ATB book, the answer to the bell book. Um, I see you now is like taking your boxing career, what it took to become a world champion with your coaching career and putting it together with your kind of your story. And now I, I perceive that, that you share that and work with companies and 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 bring that that information to people who work for these companies. Do I do I have it right based on what I'm seeing in social media? All right, hold on a second. A little buffer. yeah, I mean, it, it, in some shape and form, correct. Yeah, you're on the in the ball. Um, am I buffering or am I? No, keep going. Get, keep going. Yeah. Me? Okay. No, I, I'm I'm putting people in the ring uh, in their own ring, and I, I'm I'm putting them in the fight, and um, I've gotten to a place where I understand what my my uh, uh my talents were uh which were as an athlete but now as uh as i grew and as i got to the other side of things now i'm i'm giving what i believe what my gift is which is people um helping people in the ring helping people overcome helping people endure helping people answer the bell like a champion and dealing with those waves dealing with those rounds and, and being on the outside uh, uh helping the mastermind uh, their perfect performances, uh, helping them overcome and, and helping them prevail. Um, how did that happen, champ? How, how did... Um, people as a whole, just helping people win. Yeah. How, how did that happen? How did you become a uh, professional coach? How did you start working with companies that need to have their employees be in the ring and, and maximize their potential and their performance? How did you get into that? Yeah, it's a great question. Um, living life, uh, going through these, yeah, I, I went through all these moments that you, you talked about and, and that you're talking about 
to get to these moments. So just the equity that um, I, what I'm able to talk about, there's no. God, I'm, I'm hanging on every word. I'm literally in, uh, hanging on every word. Uh, actual, um, actual things that people have had that I've had to go through that have, uh, that I'm able, when I'm talking to you, I'm actually, there's authenticity to what has happened. There's not something you, that you, that you have to read about that. You have to do a, a uh, pick a, B or C this, the real test is I've dealt with this. So the testimonies are real because I've started in these things, and, but I had to get to the other side. And because I've been able to, I'm, Oh man, I'm helping. I'm able to help others to get in the ring. I'm help able to help others to win. Um, I'm able to help others acquire the belt in their life. I love it, man. I do. I love it. Gosh, I'm so bummed out. We're we're having like some buffering issues. Chad. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I'm in a good part too. That's uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm in a good part. Meaning as far as where I am, I don't. So I don't know why. I mean, this is there should be no scratch records. No, uh, you know, skip. Uh, uh, CDs. <laughs> <laughs> Champ, my, my favorite part of your story, and hopefully we can hear the end of this. My favorite part of your story is that as a boxer, you had two idols, Michael Jackson and Muhammad Ali, and you would incorporate both of their acts into your, your boxing style. Mm -hmm. And I always, I just, I always love that, you know, like taking the best of, of, you know, what you saw as a kid and like using that. Right. Yeah, what I I I you went on. What did you ask me as far as that? What did you say? I'm sorry. No, it's okay. It's just we're we're having these buffering issues. I just my favorite part of your story is is the Muhammad Ali, Michael Jackson, oh God, like the yeah. two different oh, personalities in the oh, ring. Absolutely. You know, yeah, they they're they're equally um, uh, responsible. Oh my God, I can't believe how this is, Alex. I can't remember the last time this has happened to us. Souls each day. Uh, for me getting up at four in the morning because each of them added so much flavor, uh, so much determination to their art, their science of uh, what they were out setting out to be. But both of them um, were about helping people. So yeah, um, each day when I wake up, still, I wake up in the mindset as a student of both of them trying to become the best, making sure that I'm always in that wannabe starting mode. I mean it from the jump. From the time moment I wake, I'm blessed to wake up. I'm in one of these stars. Darn it. And I mean, it. God. That's the truth. I, I, I'm so frustrated by this buffering because I, and it's probably like bothering me more than it's bothering everybody else. Like who's watching is maybe it's not as bad, but did you say when you get up in the morning, you want to be starting something? From the moment I jumped, I'm in one of these starting mode all. And then that, per, that goes all the way through. The slice of the each, you know, human nature, smooth criminal, whatever, all the way to the exit. When I do man in the mirror, that's the way it rolls. I roll that way. Want to be starting some? I get it jumping off in, at 4 a.m. in the morning and then to whatever. I, I don't really. Got to look at that man in the mirror at the end of the day. Exit. Guys. I have to be strong. So from the jump, I'm strong to the moment I rest my eyes. I'm strong. I love it. But, I, I'm, I, I'm, but I'm strong for others. I have a question. The art behind you. Talk to me yes, about brother. that because that that yeah. picture is fantastic. Uh, yeah, Malcolm X. Um, it's a beautiful piece. I'm currently right now. I'm at the uh, a firm, law firm that I that I consult that I consult for, and um, yeah, it's a beautiful piece of art. I um, there's a various uh, there's John F. Kennedy. Uh, there's uh, 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 Nelson Mandela. Uh, there's a uh, uh, Oh, well, they got some decent, they got some nice looking art. They do. Oh, Down there. Uh, Nelson Mandela. There's, uh, like I said, Ken, there's, there's a plethora of, of grapes, of grapes. And, but, um, yeah, I want to be behind, uh, Malcolm. Yeah. They got to, they got to, uh, they got to behind me. They got to put up Ali and they got to put up Michael Jackson. Well, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll work on it. I got enough of that. I got enough of that. At, at, uh, uh, well, I never have enough, but I mean, oh, don't stop till you get enough, right? <laughs> <laughs> don't stop to you shum on shum, shum on, on. Shum yeah on. On. hey champ shum it's on. great to do a great friends catch up with you happy holidays to you and your family man we miss you we appreciate oh, you and uh glad we stay in touch brother oh hey, hey likewise oh my god 
I feel like Paul's just about to say so something. So proud really of the three of you. I, I and I told Cap this. You guys have, you guys are blending in in such a a, a, a just a a positive light. I love what each of you bring to the team. The three of you collectively are really doing it. I and when I say I can't wait to three o'clock, I really really freaking mean it. When I'm not listening to you, that means I'm doing something, uh, meaning that I have to get to my next thing. But when as soon as I get to the car. Uh, or when I get to where I'm listening to you guys and I'm always awaiting to hear what, what you guys, the three of you collectively are doing. You guys are really building. I mean that with my utmost respect. Shamon. Thank you. Shamon, Shamon is right. Shamon, Shamon, Shamon is right. Champ, we'll talk yeah. to you real soon, man. Be well. Happy holidays. All right. God bless you. Happy, Happy holidays. You. Thank you God, so much. God bless you, man. There he is, the champ, Paul Vaden. I know there were there was some buffering in there. I got it. You know, but he was saying stuff. I love Paul Vaden. I don't know. I hope you guys love him the yeah. way I do. I do. I just hate buffering more than it just sucks. I know yeah, it does buffering. suck. God, it yeah. sucks. And there's nothing you could do about it. Like, it nope. is what it, like, age you know, yeah, yeah, it's not like, hey, Paul, call back from a different spot of, of the road. You know, you're just kind of <laughs> in an <laughs> office. Look what we had to do for our internet so we don't buffer. And sometimes yeah. we still have this. <laughs> took a, right. It took us months to years to figure right. out. Right. Yes. All right. Well, well, yeah. hey, champ, listen, Laugh I know you're out there. Kid. I know you're out there listening. We love you, man. We appreciate you. We do. And have a great and happy holiday season. Listen, for all of our radio listeners right now, stay right where you are, because we're going to jump back in to uh, more NFL football from the weekend, more question marks about what the Chargers are going to do. Are the Chargers really getting Bill Belichick? We're going to talk about that story. Everybody who's on radio, stay right where you are. Everybody who's with us on podcast, this is it. Let's go get uncensored right now. All right, everybody. Hey, wrapping things up today. Um, for those of you that are with us, man, I know that that Paul Vaden shit was fucked up. I know. Uh, <laughs> I love Paul, and I'm really sorry about the buffering, and there was really nothing we could do. And when we got done, the question was, do we air it? Do we not air it? Um, I love Paul Vaden. He's like a San Diego institution to me. And I know that it was annoying along the way that he was buffering. And then every time he buffered, I was like, oh, my God, he's buffering. And then he would come back and go, what? Can you hear me? Can you hear I mean, I know that that part of it sucked. But there was a lot of other stuff in there that I really loved. So I wanted to keep it in there for you. If you want to beat me up over it, go ahead. Can okay. you believe Can you believe Browner strapped up a Peloton with, like, ribbon? What the fuck, bro? It's a fucking yeah. giant machine, bro. It's heavy That's as hell. It. it was so heavy. I had no idea it was that heavy. I, Again, oh, I've yeah. never ridden one. I've never actually seen one in person. So I didn't know how physically heavy it was, and I didn't know how structurally big it was. It was bigger than I thought. Yeah. Let's just yep. say that. But you got it, man. And Alex, I mean, but it seems like this is a very happy transaction. Browner was able to get the Peloton very inexpensively, comparatively speaking, and then yeah. deliver it to where it was going. And for you, your mm -hmm. wife was out of town and you, she wanted that Peloton out of her apartment so or condo so badly mm -hmm. that it sounded as if you were able to accomplish that goal. She was going to take good care of her man last night. Yeah, pretty much. Did you surprise her? Did you not say anything? Just let her walk in the door? Did you say, hey? No, I had to ask her how much we owed and if she was comfortable with the transaction. So uh, she kind of knew it was coming. But yeah, like the first thing she walked in here, she's like, it's fucking gone. Thank God. Like, <laughs> and I'm like, dude, like just because you don't use it. You know what I'm saying? Like, but whatever. <laughs> whatever. And she's like, did you give him the shoes God. too? And I was like, what's he going to do with like size eight shoes? Like. I don't know. They're still in the drawer. So we got Peloton shoes, but our gym has, our gym has a bunch of Peloton. So it's all good. Oh, so funny. Smart. Really smart. All right, listen, we got to go. Uh, we're back tomorrow. Brown, I know Did you they got expand uh, that gym across the street. Yeah. There's an upstairs I, now too. I thought they knocked down the wall. I was like, wait, this place got way bigger. No, you got to go outside to go into the new part. It's up next, uh, to the ice, next to the ice cream shop. Right. It's actually on top of the ice cream shop. You want to talk about, mental fortitude mental strength you get done with a workout and you walk out and it's a fucking ice cream shop and you're working out and all you smell is fresh waffle cones the whole fucking so time. good too, bro. crazy dude Dude, you gotta have a protein shake place next door fuck the no. ice cream you know what i'm saying no, all right that. we gotta go we're back tomorrow it's a crazy week so i'm hustling at all times peace out everybody love you we'll see you guys tomorrow